front panel connectors can be a nightmare for a lot of people you're quite worried about it you get confused and you think you can do something wrong it's not it's very easy and in today's tutorial i'm going to teach you how to connect the front panel connectors to the motherboard very easily okay so we start with the top left power led positive and negative and bob's your uncle the top right was our power switch easy peasy bottom left is going to be the hdd led and last but not least the reset switch this is the two pin cable let's put the speaker cable just to be thorough why not okay here's a treat for you we have another board for comparison this is an older board and the reset switch last but not least goes here already you should be giving me a like and a subscribe in it let's take it out <laughs> Hey name Tags and welcome this is Ash from Hill Mind Tech and on this channel we do reviews, repairs and tutorials of tech so if you want to unleash your true potential start by subscribing enable the bell notification icon so I can help you go from newbie to techie and please use my Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Now I've got my computer case turned upside down because I needed to pull the cables close to the motherboard which is currently outside of the case to give you this tutorial. So these are the bad boys that a lot of people get worried about and there's actually four cables to connect and on this model of the motherboard which is the MSI B450 Tomahawk we've got the speaker cable just on top of it okay but it will vary from motherboard to motherboard make sure you check exactly where your front panel connectors are located on your manual talking about the manual if you don't have it please find it online and it is a very important tool for reference even i sometimes need to check the manual every now and then to find information and this is the front panel connector it's called the jfp1 that's the speaker cable we just saw and the four main cables you need to worry about are the power led power switch hdd led and reset switch on this diagram we've got the top four pins and the bottom five pins the number nine on the, your bottom right is actually reserved on this motherboard but that is to do with usually the reset switch although in this uh, specific uh, case we have a two pin cable in for all of them in some cases you may have a three pin switch for the reset switch so if your cable has a three pin end don't panic the middle one usually will not be active in which case then you're going to be plugging that three pin into the last three at the bottom here okay and the middle one will not be active and if anyone knows any different let me know in the comments below now I did part of this tutorial when we did the post test, it was either part 13 or 14 of our one PC to them or challenge series. I'm going to put the link up there for you to know. So in there I showed you how to connect a single switch, although on here the label is a reset switch, it didn't matter because we only needed one switch to be able to turn the computer on or you could use a screwdriver to bridge the connection for the power switch. Okay. Now for this tutorial I've already placed the cables and I'm going to do it in reverse first and then I'm going to show you how to put each of them and I've just realized that my speaker cable is broken, not a major issue, I can solder that back on but I've got a pack of 10 of these so it shouldn't be a problem. This is just for illustration purpose, this is not needed. Now let me take this off so you know where we can start from next time and i'm going to start from the bottom right is it bottom right for you guys this is a reset switch right and this is the what hdd led and then we've got the power led i guess plus and minus and then the power switch on i think yeah okay cool and there we have it even on the board you can see if you can see clearly it says jfp1 and then you've got all the same labeling as on the diagram with the last one being reserved which means this one is reserved it can be very difficult to to read this okay if you're working inside the case so what i would advise is you try to connect these if your cables for your computer are long enough connect these outside of the case use your motherboard box and connect them and then you can place the whole thing inside of your case if you can maneuver it it can be very difficult to read these once it's inside especially if you're using a small case which is why i always say try to use a bigger case if you can afford the size obviously in this example my case is upside down but this is just for illustrative purpose okay quiz question does anyone know if it matters in terms of orientation can you put it this way or the other way in terms of plus or minus so let me know in the comments below we'll see if you're right or wrong also in terms of order of insertion where do you start top or bottom right or left outside of the case i would advise you start with top left 
working your way to the right and then the bottom left and then to the bottom right but inside the case it will depend on how big your fingers and thumb are and how much space you've got which is why i recommend you work in a bigger case normally a standard mid tower case okay so we start with the top left power led positive and negative and bob's your uncle the top right was our power switch easy peasy bottom left is going to be the hdd led and last but not least the reset switch this is the two pin cable this is where you would use the third reserve one if you had a three pin cable and that's done and for reference let's put the speaker cable just to be thorough why not and uh, my previous speaker cable broke so this is a reshoot you might see this is different now and that's it you're done already you should be giving me a like and a subscribe in it another quick quiz for you which of these cables do you think are absolutely necessary to at least turn your computer on write them down in the comments below it could be one it could be more list them in order if you wish if there is such a thing okay here's a treat for you we have another board for comparison this is an older board from intel the lga socket 775 this is a gigabyte motherboard so the front panel connectors are down here and uh, this one has got some colors which is nice and you can see it says f panel for front panel these are the speaker cables and down here we have similar nine pins and although i don't have the manual for this i'm guessing the one to the bottom right is going to be non-active the rest should be the same but the labeling is slightly different if you can see maybe i'll give you a picture later if you can't see the first one says msg i have no idea what that stands for okay no problem we found it on google msg stands for message power sleep led and the pin assignment one is closer to our diagram so obviously hd uh, power and then reset and then we've got pwr led here so which is a three pin cable so on this model we've got three pins to be fair i don't use the power led on this model nor the msg because i didn't need to it was an older board i just needed for the computer to turn on and of course the speaker was important so i didn't bother so i'm hoping you guys can figure this out you can find the manual if not let me know in the comments below if you have any problem with any specific board but you're gonna to have to send me a diagram and uh, i need to locate the manual for that okay so let's try to show you how to do this on this intel board we're gonna start with a speaker cable for reference plug in there and then we're gonna grab whatever we can i'm gonna do the power switch Try to grab the cable from the end and not pulling on the actual cable because over time you might just break them. So the power switch is the most important one. Bingo. Now power LED, I'm guessing it's going to go here. So we'll do that. What's this one? The HDD goes down here. And the reset switch, last but not least, goes here. And uh, for me, that's good enough. Now there's one extra precaution you could potentially do depending how far you're in with your build if you've managed to connect your power supply to the motherboard and all the other relevant cables especially for the power you could outside of the box while you place maybe this on top making sure this is not uh, making contact with your case yeah on use the board you could do a power switch on test which means use the power switch from your case turn it on while all your front panel connectors are connected the reason is because you want to make sure that it's still turning on and you don't want to find out after you put it inside that one of the cables was wrong it's not entirely necessary but you could do this if uh, you want to be extra cautious especially if you're a first time builder but like i told you it would depend what have you got installed inside your case maybe you don't even have your power supply in which case you may have to do a bit of uh, maneuvering with all the cables yeah something to bear in mind it's always better to test as you add more components on because troubleshooting can become very very difficult so this is as simple as i can teach you don't be scared of it once you learn to do one or two you'll be fine I actually learned this way before I started doing tech stuff. It was probably about almost maybe 10 years ago, maybe less, okay? Which I didn't know tech much, but I did manage to connect that. Just to show you that if I was able to do this before I learned tech, it is not as difficult as people think. So don't be worried. You'll be fine. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comments below. And please, my viewers, help them out. I have problems trying to respond to everyone. Far too many questions sometimes. But do learn how to do this properly because this is a very important troubleshoot step in a lot of cases because you may not have connected the right cable in the right pin 
and this is why your computer won't turn on and I've showed this in one of my tutorials for the troubleshoot series link up there for you to go watch it in which case we talked about how the case can be a reason why your computer is not turning on because it's either the power switch which isn't working or the cable between the power switch and your motherboard is not inserted properly or this is actually broken so you would want to do a bridging test to just eliminate the issue and find out why it's not turning on okay just a physical test trust me a lot of people overlook this they will test everything in the computer except for the switch or the cable which shouldn't happen so hopefully this tutorial was beneficial for you now we are still doing the one pc two of them all challenge series in fact today this tutorial is a standalone tutorial i'm going to be uploading but this is part of part 18 of our one pc two of them all challenge series which i'm redoing because the live version of this went horribly wrong i did not like the production value and it was too long over an hour so we're going to do a condensed version so watch out for that part or i may just upload this as part 19 but i'll decide later so check the title for exact name before you go make sure you have subscribed and enable the bell notification icon and make sure you give me a like and leave me a comment on this video consider sharing this as well and check out that video up here which has been selected by youtube for you and this troubleshoot series which we've talked about and it will benefit you a lot once again thank you so much for watching this was ash from hill my tech helping you go from newbie to techie until next time peace out Oh, <laughs>